guys, welcome back again. Dave's Dimension, welcome back again for another video. Welcome back again to your channel that is your home for toys, tech, and talk, and of course, the channel where chaos and insanity will always reign supreme. So we're back in for another video. We're not unboxing, we're actually doing a little bit of a paint test of mod. What do you say we check that out? Okay guys, this is going to be a little test paint. Now as I said in previous video that I was going to attempt to paint these kind of a gold. Oh, I don't have a brass color, but I have gold. So we're going to do a little test here to see how well this will actually go on. And the paint that I'm using here is this is pretty much your basic craft paints you can get at, uh, you know, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, Michaels, Joins Fabrics, any of those craft places you can pick up this paint. It's, it's pretty affordable too. I've used it for other projects at first. Now, I'm not going to glob, I'm not going to grab a bunch of paint, just enough that the brush is wet. Because I want to spread this around. Now, with this being a black piece uh, right here, basically it's a dark tone. It may take several coats to get the desired effect that we're hoping for. Now, I don't know how well this is going to come across on the camera, but it obviously is running in certain spots. Now, you might want to use a smaller brush at first. Now, there is one way I could cheat. I could put a bunch of painter's tape around this part right here, hit it with a gold, uh, like a Rust-Oleum, like a gold spray that's all a primer at the same time. But there's going to be a few pieces where I won't be able to exactly do that. So, we're just doing this as a bit of a test. I don't know how well this is going to come across. You can see that obviously it's not looking all that awesome. But we have to let this dry first. And I'm, you, this is an old uh, Lego book, so I'm just using this as a surface. That way I'm not getting drops of it on the desk or on the keyboard mat here. Now, with it being a little runny, I am going to smooth it across a few times. to Kind of get the uh, excess, so to speak. Because we don't want it to look like bubbles. We want it to look nice and flat. Now, when this dries, I'm going to let it dry, of course, and then we're going to try another coat on it to see how well it works. Now, I'm going to show you guys this. Now, this piece right here, now, this is supposed to be, look like a slightly lighter gray. This more comes off more like a dark charcoal, almost black. Um, that's just the way the rubbers and the plastics are that they use for this. Now this is supposed to be gray. This is an elbow piece uh, that goes on certain certain spots of the proton pack. These grommets, so to speak, these should be gray, and this should be that gold brass color. So depending on how well this actually turns out, that's going to determine what we're going to do next. Okay, so while we're waiting for that piece to dry, I actually started doing a, using a more flat brush, doing nice light strokes across one of these other pieces, these other grommets, if you will, uh, that we need to get that gold kind of look to it. And it's actually coming out pretty, uh, a little more even than the other piece. So that might be the, the better way is using a nice flat bristle brush. Now I just get these budget uh, assortment sets like you get at the, uh, you see a Walmart, uh, pretty much the same kind of sets you see at Walmart and uh, Michaels, Joanne's Fabrics, all those craft and hobby places. I'm going over it, just kind of making sure everything's even, that we don't have too much excess on one spot opposed to another. And on this piece, there is a little bit of a crevice, so I turn the brush sideways. And making sure I'm going down that groove. And it's okay to take your time. This isn't a rush. This isn't a race. You know, 
And if you have nervousness, I'm asthmatic. Some of, if uh, there's a, a certain medicine, I take uh, an albuterol solution for my nebulizer, uh, breathing treatments, if you will. When I tend to use those, the, that and my regular inhaler medicine can sometimes leave me with a slight tremor in my hand. So even if you have tremors, you have terrible coordination, which, geez, I really do have really bad hand and eye coordination. You can still do these kinds of projects. You can still take your time and do it right. Now, again, this is something where I could easily just put a little piece of uh, handers tape right here and then put another piece around here and I could just hit it with spray. That's something I could easily do. But like I said, I wanted to do this by hand and see how well this would actually work. Now, even though looking at it, I obviously under light, there's some areas that look darker than others, but we still have to wait for this to dry properly to see what happens, okay? Now, obviously we don't want to set this down because the paint is still tacky. Um, if you have something that will allow you to hang it, like a clip, some kind of an arm or something. I mean, whoa, we don't want that to happen. I mean, I could easily just use my Yeti right here, right? Let's see if I can do that just right. There we go. See, just to show you guys right there, I actually have it hanging off the side. It's not touching, it's not rubbing against anything, it's just hanging. Listen, in the absence of the proper tools and the proper settings, you make your tools. Whatever you have around you, you know, if you don't have the tools, you make them. That's something my dad always taught me, okay? And that's what I'm doing here. Now, looking at this, yeah, a lot of it's uneven, so I'm gonna take the flat bristle brush, and I'm just gonna hit it up. Going to smooth the surface, kind of adding a second coat to it. Let's see if we can smooth things through. Because when I look at it, I can see the runs. No jokes, guys, okay? I'm talking about the paint, how it kind of runs down. I don't want that. You want it to be kind of as even as possible. And if you get a little bit down here, then so be it. Okay? A friend of mine always told me, when it comes to prop making... You're telling a story, okay? You know, some people, you know, they like to say happy accidents. Not me. Just let this dry a little bit more, and then we'll check it out. Because honestly, this piece right here, you can see, little, you can see, I put a little, little bit of gold right there, and that's perfectly fine. Because on the real piece, it actually protrudes, and it's a solid brass piece. I'm going to show you guys that in just a second here. Okay, just to show you guys, this is a, this is an Etsy store GB uh, G, GB. HQ Parts Depot, I use them all the time for the real parts on some of my previous previous packs. See how this is all one solid brass piece? That's similar to, to this right here. That's similar to the piece that we're using here. And you heard me mention about an elbow piece that the elbow grommet it should be a lighter gray. That's the piece right there, guys. So just to give you guys a little bit of a better idea. Now these are those brass pieces I was talking about. Uh, this is a variation on it. Not the same exact one, but pretty damn close. You can see it's pretty much an all brass piece. Okay. So yeah, it looks like a brass or kind of a gold color. And that's what we're trying to go for here. So... I think it's looking pretty good. I mean, obviously, I have to let it dry and do 
another coat on it. But what do you guys think? Like I said, with these projects, they don't have to be 100% perfect. They really don't. Show you guys this one. I mean, I think this is looking pretty good. Now, this is going to be a piece that's actually hidden. I mean, unless you're really looking up close at the Proton Pack, you're not going to see this. You really aren't. Just to show you guys here, this is um, uh, my friend Merritt Long's uh, Spangler Pack that he heavily modified. Now, you see where there's the label that says Danger at that center tube? And then you see two pieces, two uh, machines, brass pieces with the red, red wires, red cable sticking out. That's this piece. That is this piece right here. So again, unless you are up close and personal, you're really not gonna notice if there's imperfections anywhere. You're really not. So what do you guys think about that, huh? Again, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be waiting for this to dry and then we're gonna do another coat. Okay, so I'm working on the other end of this piece now. Uh, this is def this is definitely coming out way better than I anticipated. Now, I will put some stills up of the finished product. Now, what I'm doing is I am globbing up a little bit of paint, but then I'm brushing it. Now, usually, ideally, paper towels are much better because we're going for the doing a bit of a dry brush, if you will, where we just have a n a little bit. You know, we don't want it to run. We don't want it to be too runny. But that's what I'm doing. I'm basically... You notice I haven't switched the other side of the brush just yet. Now, as far as this goes, because these are obviously pre-molded, I'm not worrying about it too much. I would like to do the official tissue, so to speak, uh, put some real pieces on on the pack at some point. But for right now, for the time being, because uh, finances are a little bit crunched right now, this is a low cost kind of workaround for what I need. Now. On here, I am getting a little bit of extra paint on here, like on the tape part. Now, either you can, you know, take a little bit of paint thinner, some rubbing alcohol, you know, or a rag, just wipe it off a little bit. Or, if you can match up the tape here, get yourself into some tape to put over this tape, and then cover up the spot that's being covered by the uh, paint. That's one way to go about it. Just one way to go about it. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you guys that picture again of my buddy Merritt, of his pack. Now, he's got, he replaced the transistor. Those are real transistors. He replaced the hoses because he's built a few proton packs in his time as well. Now, if you notice, uh, he ran a new wire and he actually put red electrical tape on those gray elbows. Okay. If you notice down here, we've got the brass piece right there. Another elbow piece right there, and then we have, these are supposed to be two brass pieces, but it looks like he got some, possibly some silver plate or nickel plated ones here and here. But, I mean, that just goes to show you, you know, at, with Ghostbuster Proton Pack, there's a lot of different things you can do. Now, instead of replacing this hose right here, from this section up into what we call the gearbox right below the crank knob, now if you notice, it looks like he, put another tube over here, but then he applied some tape over it to show kind of a blending or patchwork because this is Ghostbusters Afterlife after, after all. So this is the modified proton pack that Egon might have, may have built. You know, everything was kind of like jerry-rigged together. So that aesthetic, that look goes perfectly with that. And the reason he did that extra tube was he took a bunch of extra wires because on the actual HasLab pack, there is kind of a little faux section, but they're all black plastic, black rubber. 
There's no color to it. At least this looks like these are actual wires coming out of the hose. So he definitely stepped it up and gave it a, so much of a better look. And this is my inspiration. I mean, he kind of did the same thing with this loom right here. But he actually put proper looms and permanently affixed them to the equipment. Now, HasLab and Hasbro Pulse, when they did these, they did it so these pieces can disconnect. Well, with his setup, these are permanently on, but you can still lift the cover. It just means that the cover is going to be hanging because it's connected to all these wires and hoses, but that's perfectly fine. Definitely, I mean, a major, major, major go. I mean, from a distance, you probably couldn't tell necessarily that these are plastic, if you didn't know any better. I definitely think it looks good. They're still drying. You can see a little discoloration on this on this one right here. But we're going to let that dry, and I'll probably put another coat on it. It's uh, actually about 11.32 at night, so I might dab another coat in a few spots here, and then we'll probably call it a night. Well, it is a night. You guys know what I mean. Know what I mean, Vern? Just adding, now if you notice, I'm not really putting on a bunch of new paint. I'm just kind of smoothing everything out that's on there. That's all. Just smoothing it out. And you know, I'm not really holding this any special kind of way either. You know, just whatever feels natural because if you feel like you have a firm grip on it, you feel they're not gonna drop or loose or slip out, Great. And that's the thing, guys. Don't be afraid to make mistakes, because what happens if, if I mess up here? Well, I can put another color on it. There's other things we can do here. Okay? Now, I'm just going to set these off to the side. There we go. Let's take a look at this one here. I'm not worried about if there's any gold that gets on this part because this part actually goes into the side of the pack. So that's perfectly fine. My concern is this part right here. I do need to touch it up because there is some dark spots here. Or sorry, I say some unpainted sections. I'm just taking a quick dab, rubbing it off, and then hitting it slightly. Just little strokes. Now, when it comes to dry brushing, or even some of the, uh, like I have used hot glue to make fake welds before, what I will do is I will take cardboard, and I'll practice, you know, wiping some paint on there, doing a little dry brushing with that, or, you guys know what I, what I said a little earlier, if you don't have the tools, guess what, you're going to make them, right? We don't have the tools when we make them. Look what I'm using right now. I'm using a Gatorade cap for my paints. Because you don't need to have a crap ton of paint. You know, you don't have to fill up like a little, uh, you know, ketchup cup or hot sauce cup from a restaurant. You don't need to take a little cup like that and fill it all the way up. Just squirt a little bit of paint out into like a bottle cap or whatever you have it's going to work perfectly fine. Okay? You don't have to go gonzo with it. I'm just hitting it lightly now. I do have some smaller brushes I can use. I'd rather save them, you know? Okay, yeah, that's looking much better. It's not perfect. But, guys, like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. <clears throat> this proton pack is meant to be meant to look like it's worn, like it's been through hell, because well, it's like a forty some odd year proton pack. I mean, come on now. So yeah, so yeah, this is the thing. I'm gonna have to get some gray paint so I can do some gray here. Now they got a different kind of a fastener here. They give it a little bit of a 
textured band here, almost like this is maybe a silver part. And then the rest of this, I mean, this is completely different than what I showed you guys before. Let's go back to it. Oh, no, not that. Go to Etsy. Going back to my friend Etsy here. There we go. So we're gonna go back, take a look at, these are the elbow pieces themselves. Doesn't quite look anything like that, right? I mean, this top part maybe, but they definitely took a lot of poetic license when it came to doing this. Looks completely, completely different, doesn't it guys? So you see the brass part and then you see the threaded part. The threaded part is what goes into the pack itself. And then you see where there, there looks like a little bit of a, a cap that sits on top of that. That's where your wire, your red wire would feed into. But also, let me show you guys this. Also, they have these small little molded pieces. These are supposed to be like a hose clamps, the ones that you kind of screw in. So if I replace this whole thing, I'd also have to kind of replace those, but they're going to be a lot bigger than what this looks like. It would be a lot bigger than what you see right here. If I were to do that, that is. Well, what do you guys think so far? Not bad, right? I think it's, I think it's actually worked coming out pretty well. At least that's what I like to think. Now we've been having this one lay around for a good while. You can still see there's like some wear, some smudge. I'm gonna hit that up with another coat. Again, I'm wiping a little, little bit of it. We only need so much on here. Again, I think the flat brush is working wonders opposed to the other brush I was using before. I think it's allowing for nice even strokes, nice even application of paint across the prop because this is a smooth surface. Now if it was more round, I could still, I probably would still be better off using the flat brush uh, for certain spots, I would say. Maybe not for everything, but for some spots. Now uh, this looks pretty good here. Just touch it up a little bit. There we go. And like I said, guys, never be afraid to make any kind of mistake here. Now, I know there's going to be people who are watching this like, what are you doing? Why are you modifying a HasLab? Well, it's a Proton Pack, guys. You might have heard me say this before in other videos. It's your prop. Do what you want with it. And that's what I'm doing here. Uh, doing a little bit of paint. This is a test, mind you. This is just a test, I guess. Could I have tested it on something that was not part of the pack? Sure. I sure could have done that. But where's the fun in that, guys? Where's the fun of it? Where's the risk? If you guys want to see me screw up, what better way than actually doing it on the parts here? So now my thing is I think after work I'm going to go to a hobby shop like Joann's or something. I can go into the falls as soon as I get out of work. And I think I'll get a, a gray to go with that. I know the exact color because, well, I have a full scale proton pack I built. The Bennett Kent pack and the brass pieces, the elbows. I did get that myself and I did actually go through GBHQ Depot on Etsy. They are literally my go to. If you're building any kind of Ghostbuster equipment, Etsy is a great resource. A lot of times you can find all different kinds of pieces. You just type it in, Bob's your uncle. I, in fact, I have a whole folder of different parts that I have found on Etsy. Again, GBHQ Parts Depot. Because <clears throat> I do want to do, I mean, my buddy Merritt, his pack is just perfect chef's kiss the upgrades that he's done they just look amazing and these are real pieces mind you so for something like this you will have to do some drilling 
Well, first you got a Dremel, use a rotary tool to cut off the fake one that they have. And then you actually have to drill a hole, uh, probably use a little bit of epoxy to get, secure this in there. That's what I did on my Benef Kent, which is a resin shell uh, pack. So that is one thing you can do. Uh, they have lots of other parts here. The actual transistors. This is the long one uh, on the picture I showed you of Merit's pack. It actually showed a uh, more of a gold looking piece. You know, it depends on, you know, where you can get the parts and at what price point, you know. And plus, I, I think on his, it pops a little more, you know. <laughs> the gold definitely pops on his. Because usually we see like a brass piece like that on uh, Ghost Traps. So why not on a Proton Pack? I think it definitely makes things pop a little more. Adds a bit more contrast, you know. Some other parts they have here. There's the one that goes on the other side. These are real pieces. They've just been procured. Those are parts we were looking at before. These are some of the hose clamps we can get. As you can see, in order to get the hose clamps to fit properly, the red hose is too thin so what they did was they wrapped, they took a bunch of uh, right electrical tape, wrapped it around a bunch of times until they can get the smallest setting, the, the smallest tightness or fitting on that uh, hose clamp to fit it so that it does look right. And it looks like they're going with uh, orange wires here on theirs. I think I'm going to be leaning towards blue wires on mine to make yeah, make a little, little bit difference. And this is where the clip, clipper valve will go. At least on that person's pack. Those brass pieces I talked about before. They look nice and shiny. Now these strain tubes. Um, this is definitely something I'm going to be looking at. Because basically this is what you, what's used. On that loom. Where you saw the. Multicolored -color wiring. We don't have that. On the, on the spring on the Haslab, we don't see the colors. We something we see something simulating this kind of a spiral wrap into this little grommet here that then inserts into the pack itself. Okay, this is someone's scratch build as you can see. Okay, but there we go. We got the uh, that's Adam Savage look holding up one of the uh, packs from the movie. But let me show you guys. Again, there's Merritt's pack. You can see he put the wires in there. He really did a fantastic job. Now, let me show you. Let me see if I can get this to rotate just a wee bit. Now, see in here, you don't see that. All this is just one thick piece of rubber. One rubbery thick, thick, that thick piece here. And they have molded to look like there's wires going down, but there's no color. There's, there's nothing to make things pop, as it were. Which is a major downside. Now, I'm going to show you guys. Now, this is the transistor that I was talking about before. This is the faux one that's on the HasLab. It's just a rubber piece that comes right out. Now, so we already have a black kind of gray, charcoal-y looking pack, right? Now, go back to my friend's pack. Whoa, there we go. Doesn't that pop so much more? I mean, it really pops the hell out. I mean, if you did that, I mean, you, you could do some weathering, but think about it. If this pack was in use, Egon built it years ago. His grandkids used it to take out Gozer and Afterlife. Spoilers, I know. And imagine taking that pack back to New York City. It's going to need a few replacement parts. So that goes perfectly with Firehouse, with Ghostbusters Firehouse. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what the packs look like. But my buddy here, man, he friggin' killed it when I saw him at New York, uh, at the New York City Con in Buffalo, New York. And I was like, dude, dude, wait, wait, don't tell me. Turn around. I took the picture here. And I'm like, dude, you are a friggin' madman. You are a madman. I'm like, 
this looks friggin' amazing. And he he got his pack and he started tinkering with everything. I mean, take I mean, I'm not just saying this because because he's he's my friend. I'm saying this because this looks friggin' amazing. This shows you where you could take this. You can take the standard, uh, you know, the standard uh, HasLab Proton Pack that people bought, and then take it to a level that will blow people's minds. Mind blown. That's all I can say about that, guys. But guys, what do you think about this? You think uh, what do you think about the painting here? Even on this piece, I think I might clean it up a little bit. But if it looks a little worn in some spots, that might add to the aesthetic. Aesthetic is that how you say it? aesthetic? You know. So there you go. I'm not. You know, I don't have a fancy little paint setup. You know, I just have an L-shaped desk. I have the computers right here. I have a window. I got the pack right here. This is what I'm doing, guys. Guys, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know in the comment section below. If you have some thoughts and criticisms, always hit me up either in the comment section below or you can email me at davesdimension78 at gmail.com. Of course, you can always message me directly at Instagram on daves underscore dimension. And also, if you're feeling charitable and you want to help out the channel, we do have a PayPal. And that's also in the video description below and at the bottom of the screen, guys. So, guys, until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting. And you know what I'm going to say. I say it every single time. I will always catch you on the flip side. Take care.